Hey everyone, this is me, Summer Kelly here, back with another video. I want to thank you all for taking time out of watch this video. As you can see, I have not seen Norm playing guitar because this is another dot musical video, my first one in a couple weeks. For those of you that have tried my previous music videos, I would encourage you to go back and watch them. Sit you because hopefully, Lord willing, um, next week I'm playing back with board music videos of me, giving God all the glory, honor, and praise to His name in song. So I was thinking, planning, and praying, and making this video today, in light of it being Holy Week. The title I have for this dot musical video is simply titled this. The importance of honoring Holy Week. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the significance of Holy Week and what took place during Holy Week and how we Christians need to be appreciative, especially what the Lord has done for us, especially in light of our salvation, and perhaps telling others who are not familiar with Holy Week what it's all about. First point I want to make about it is the significance of Palm Sunday. Some of you may say, well, what's Palm Sunday? Well, this past Sunday, Palm Sunday took place, and Palm Sunday is all about the triumphant entry. Um, Christ rides through the streets of Jerusalem on a donkey. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, it says, Fear not, O daughters of Zion. Behold, your king comes to you riding on a donkey. And, of course, the crowds, their palm branches would shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And so that was very significant. And also the other part that was significant is that how a king came to you in a um, my country was very important. It, if your king came to your country riding on a horse, especially back in the ancient times, it meant the king was coming for war. But if your king came to your country riding on a donkey, it meant the king came to bring peace. So Christ riding on a donkey meant that he came to bring peace, not war. Although the Bible does say later he will come on a horse to make war with the nations, but that will be much later. And so that's what Palm Sunday is about. Christ right through the streets of Jerusalem coming in peace and the crowd shouting Hosanna. So that's the first point. So Holy Week begins on Palm Sunday. Next point I want to make about Holy Week is that is when the communion um, tradition began. Now, why is that significant? Well, the Bible talks about how Christ and disciples would have what we call the Last Supper or when or the first communion time. Communion um, has its origins from the Passover. Christ and disciples and many of the Jews past and present celebrate Passover because when the Jews were in Egypt um, during the plagues, um, the death angel um, killed all the firstborn children in Egypt. You can read about that in the book of Exodus. Um, but when the Jews put blood on the doorpost, the blood of the lamb, when the death angel saw the blood, it would pass over it. So that's why they call it Passover. And Christ's disciples many times accelerated Passover, but this time Christ was transitioning it um, to Passover to communion. And Jesus said, he took the bread and said, this is my body, which is broken for, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He took the cup, the fruit of the vine. He said, take a drink for this is the new Testament of my blood, which is poured out for you. Now I'm sure the disciples didn't fully understand um, why Jesus was doing and saying what he was saying and doing what he was doing, but hours later they would understand. So communion has its origins um, during Holy Week. And many Christians today, many churches today take communion in remembrance of Christ. So that's the second point I want to make. The third point I want to make is um, Christ's, um, Christ's prayer in Gethsemane. Um, after the last supper and communion took place, Christ's disciples went and get Gethsemane to pray. And Jesus fell on his knees and prayed, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. Now, what did Christ mean when he prayed that prayer? You, you got to understand that Christ understood the challenges he, would, he was going to suffer with the cross. He knew that, that what was to come. And he prayed, and he prayed so earnestly that he sweat drops of blood. Now, I know that sounds gory. But he prayed with such passion and he prayed that there would be some other way around the cross. But yet he still surrendered himself to the will of the Father, even though he knew the challenges ahead. And I just want to pause and say for us Christians, you know, we're not immune from life's difficulties. Is that I know for myself and I know for some of you watching, you may be going through some things and that are very difficult. And you may want to wait around them or pray your way, your way around them. But sometimes God sometimes puts us in those situations to give us grace to endure. Just like God allowed his son Jesus to endure the cross. And really when Jesus prayed against him, that gave him all the strength that he needed to endure the challenges that were yet ahead. 
That's the third point I want to make. The fourth point I want to make is Christ, the unfair trial that Christ went through. Now, why is that significant? Well, Jesus was first tried at night by the religious crowd. Now, why is that significant? Well, some believe that they were afraid to take Jesus in the daytime because the crowds would defend him. So they had a sneaky plan to, to have him go to trial at night first in front of Caiaphas and the religious crowd. And not long after that, he would be tried by Pontius Pilate. And then he would go from Pontius Pilate to Herod Antipas. Herod Antipas, that's right, was a descendant of Herod the Great. And Luke's account records um, Christ's interaction with Herod Antipas. And then Herod Antipas took Christ back to Pilate. And um, Pilate had Christ and Barabbas stand before the crowd. And, of course, many of you know that the crowd demanded for Barabbas. And so Pilate satisfied the crowd and gave them Barabbas and would lead Jesus away um, to be scourged. And so, and that brings you to my fifth point, the crucifixion. And so I love how Isaiah 53 talks about um, what type of death Jesus would die. And some of the verses in Isaiah 50, 53 go like this. Um, he, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, each every one to his own way. The Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. And what is so crazy about that is, is that Isaiah was prophesying what type of death Christ would die 700 years before it happened. How significant is that, you guys? And the Bible also says in Hebrews that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And so other things took place at the crucifix, such as darkness covering the earth, Christ was crucified between two thieves. One got saved, the other didn't. And, um, and Christ would suffer on our behalf for our sins so that we could be reconciled to Father God. And that's what tomorrow, Good Friday, is all about. And I've heard it said that Good Friday was bad for Jesus, but it was good for us. And so that's the fifth point I want to make. The sixth point I want to make that doesn't get talked about a whole lot um, is, is Christ overcoming death, hell, and the grave. Um, the book of Revelations talk about that. Jesus told John the Revelator that he holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Now, what does that mean? It's likely that Christ, in between the crucifix and resurrection, um, went down to hell to battle with the evil one, to take away, to take from the, from the devil the keys of death, hell, the grave, and to gain victory over Satan. Now, why is that important to know? Well, let me explain. So, when God created people, Adam and Eve, he created people to have a relationship with God and with each other, right? But he also gave man um, the ability to have dominion over the earth. But of course, we knew the devil tricked Adam and Eve, and they, and they listened and obeyed uh, the devil instead of God. Um, man lost their dominion, and the, the dominion was transferred over to Satan. So Satan had authority. He had legal authority over the earth, you guys over the whole earth because of, of, of man choosing to listen and obey him. And so, and so Christ not only came to reconcile us to Father God, but he also came back to take back from the evil world what rightfully belongs to man is our authority in Christ. And so when Christ took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, um, was Christ regaining um, authority o over Satan and all those who put their trust in Christ they too can have authority over the evil one. And so that doesn't get talked about a lot, but that's very significant. And last but not least, the resurrection, which took place Easter Sunday. Of course, the angel said, behold, the Lord Jesus isn't here. He is risen, just as he said. And of course, we know that the resurrection is mentioned in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as well. And of course, Christ appeared to Mary Magdalene and all the other women. He appeared to the disciples of Emmaus and later the, the 11 disciples. And um, and so Holy Week concludes on Easter Sunday, um, the resurrection. And so, and so that's what I want to share with you guys. And we have every right to be thankful for what our Lord and Savior did for us. And so to recap the points of the importance of Holy Week and the things that took place are this. Number one, Palm Sunday. Number two, communion. Number three, Christ praying at Gethsemane. Number four, his unfair trial. Number five, the crucifix. Number six, him overcoming death, hell, and the grave. And last of all, 
his resurrection, which takes place this upcoming Sunday, um, Easter Sunday. So that's what I want to share with you guys today. Um, this video is a little bit longer than usual. If it bless you, but you like, subscribe, and share with those you know and love. And um, I hope and pray that each of you guys have a blessed week and have, have, have a good, happy Friday, good Friday tomorrow, and a good Easter coming in a few days. And so let us um, be thankful and let the Lord know how much we love him and how thankful we are for what he did for you and me this Holy Week. So blessings. Have a good day and week, everyone. Happy Holy Week. Thank you.